today I'm going to answer a subscriber question that uh, has come up in my Q&A suggestion box. The subscriber is asking, I want to know if we use only one button to add a row and one button to remove a row, what is the code to be used to remove the last inserted row? And so as I understand the question, they want to know in an expanding table how to code to, to just delete the last row. So of course in this example here that I use a lot of times in my videos we have a plus button that adds a row to the end of the table and then a minus button that only deletes that corresponding row. And this question is how would we add a, a button just delete the last row instead of deleting the individual row. And so let's let's do that. Let's change this table, this commonly used table into one that will remove just the last row. So I'm going to start by adding a new row up here to house that button and I'll call this button minus last. And I'll just put a little text here that says click here to delete the last row on the table. Alright, now that's assuming of course there's more than one row because in most scenarios we don't want to delete the last row. We want only uh, at a minimum one row to appear. And so in our binding tab repeat row for each data item is checked and then minimum count is one and so if we create a last button and we keep clicking it till there's only one row left it won't delete that last row because it's not allowed by this minimum count okay so and I'll just for understanding add one row to the end of the table is that button alright so what's the scripting for this well we go into our script editor and go to the click event and what we want to do is we want to define a variable called row num like we've done before. And row num is going to equal the value of the last row. So in this row one object, we have multiple instances that are created when the plus button is clicked. So when the form first starts out, there's only one row one. That's the one we see here unless we define some kind of initial count higher than that let's say initially we want three in that case when the form first renders there'll be three rows here with minus buttons on the left of each of them and then clicking the add row button the plus button would just add a fourth or a fifth sixth and so on and so those are called instances of row one object and it's really having this named row one is a misnomer. It confuses some people. Uh, we can call this repeat row. That's a better name for it because we don't know exactly how many repeat rows there are going to be. It depends on how many times the user clicks this or it depends on our min max counts if we have them. So repeat row uh, is, is a set of repeatable rows that are all going to be named repeat row 1, repeat row 2, repeat row 3 but actually it's not numbered that way it's numbered ordinally you can see that here with this header row I added an extra header row and now since they're both named header row lifecycle has to differentiate between the two somehow and so it uses this bracketed zero here and then it's bracketed one so this is the first one here this is the second one here it counts ordinally zero one two three and so on and the same thing happens when we start repeating rows at runtime and so in order to make this code make sense, we've got to count how many rows there are at any given time and only delete the very last one. So in order to do that, we need to say table grow dot repeat row, but we use the underscore here because the underscore represents the whole set of repeat rows. And then we say count. That's a function that already exists inside of lifecycle. We don't have to create that function. It already exists. And so what that's going to do is that's going to assign the variable row num however many 
rows are there. But now we have a problem. The count function works uh, with natural numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. It doesn't work ordinally. And so you're going to get a count value. Let's say at the initial time there's three rows here. The count value is going to equal 3. But the last row, the third row of repeat row set, isn't have, doesn't have an index value of 3. It has an index value of 2 because it starts with 0. So this would be row 0 and then this, the next one, if there was another one, that would be 1 and then so on. This would be 2 here. And so we have to think ordinally and naturally when we're doing this program. So it's a little confusing. This is where most people get, this is where most people get crossed up. So our count function isn't good enough. It's going to give us a natural number. We need an ordinal number. So we're going to have to subtract 1 from the natural number to get ordinal. So in other words, if there are four rows appearing, we want the value of 3 to be our row num, because ordinarily speaking, that is row num. It's always going to be one less than the count value. All right, so then all we have to do is remove the instance. So we can go table grow, repeat row, remove instance, and then we put our value in there. Now, of course, we could have written it this way. It'd be a little more complicated, but less lines of code. We could have written it like this, uh, dot remove instance, and then put in the content of this little function here, like that. And that would work too. But I like to split these things up to, to be able to instruct on what is actually going on in the code here. All right, so let's save this and see if it actually works. All right, so we click the plus button and we immediately get an error. And I want to go ahead and not edit this part out because I want to show you how I do debugging. Obviously, I've made a mistake and there's an error. And it says that uh, subform does not have property row one. And I immediately know what my mistake is. So let's go back and let's fix that mistake. In my preloaded code, I have row one as the name of this row. And then I went during the video here and changed the name to repeat row. And so I have to change my code or else it won't work. So let me go in here and do that. That one doesn't matter because I'm using a relative reference that doesn't have the word row one in it. So we're good there. And just for example's sake, I'm gonna go ahead and make this a text field so I can type something in there to demonstrate that it's actually being removed. All right, so if we click the minus button, the row gets removed. And if we start adding rows, we want to make sure that this very last row is subtracted when we hit this button. And it is. So that works. So again, the code for this has to take into account those ordinal numbers and natural numbers. You have to think a little outside the box here. I'll put in the comment, think ordinally, just to make sure that I'm reminded next time if I ever go back to this code. All right, well, thanks for the question, Mahita, and you all that are subscribing, you can ask questions too, and, and if I think the question is good enough for production, I'll make a video of it to and use your example as a, um, as a Q and A for our sub other subscribers. If you have a question, you can go to my blog, truetechtroubleshooting.com, and click on the Contact Me button to ask your question or to send me an email correspondence or form. Get some personal help on what form of questions you have. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.